Let's hear more on David Cameron's promise to make it harder for migrants from the European Union to get access to Britain's welfare system. The Prime Minister says the migrants won't qualify for jobless benefits until they've been here for three months, nor will they get instant access to housing benefit. But an EU commissioner has accused Mr Cameron of an unfortunate overreaction and says the UK risks being seen as the nasty country. We can talk about it further with the Bulgarian ambassador to the UK, Konstantin Dimitrov. He's live in our central London studio for us. Thank you very very much for joining us. Um, so what are your thoughts on this? I think we expected this uh, article. Uh, this is a set of political intentions. We will have to wait until they are transformed into primary or probably secondary legislation. And of course we will analyze element by element everything contained in that article. We have requested consultations with the Foreign Office. And uh, most importantly, we have uh, received reassurances this morning that uh, uh, the UK will live up to its uh, treaty obligations to remove all outstanding uh, restrictions to the access to your labor market by Bulgarians who would like to uh, work legally in your country. Um, so tell us more then about the... the treaty obligations that you've received reassurances on, does that mitigate against any of the restrictions that David Cameron is talking about, particularly uh, on benefits? Uh, that, that's a totally different story, the benefits. That, that's a point I would like to drive home to your viewers. What we talk about is the removal of the need for people to apply for work permits so as to get a chance to work legally in your country. There will be no procedure for application. That is the only administrative difference between the situation today and the situation after the 1st of January 2014. So therefore there is no uh, market difference in the status of Bulgarians before and after the, uh, you know, the, this mm. mysterious date, the 1st of January 2014, because most of those who have applied for work permits in the UK have received the necessary approval for this uh, in case they have provided all the necessary documents, so we do not expect any attitudinal change as it were by Bulgarians once the new year has come. Um, so is it possible to predict how many w will come here? Um, well, there seems prediction. to be a disparity on, on the predictions. One anti-immigration research group here saying 50,000 uh, set to arrive in each of the next five years. That's Bulgarians and Romanians. Well, in principle, we reject the notion of being able to project uh, prognosis for a five-year period. The only thing we could say against the background of my previous comments is that if this year we have seen uh, an arrival of uh, legal workers to the tune of between eight and 10,000 people, we don't see any prerequisites for a rise in this annual number next year. Um, and in terms of the, the way that immigration is being talked about in this country at the moment, what are your thoughts on that? We're, we're hearing uh, Employment Commissioner and uh, others um, in Europe warning that Britain's running the risk of looking like the nasty country. I don't think your country is running the risk of being a nasty country. I think, however, that part of your politicians and part of your media are whipping up a campaign of... Uh, indeed uh, defamation even of stereotyping which is absolutely unacceptable and we react in polite but very firm terms against these qualification and these uh, attempts to uh, manipulate if you will public opinion um, and, and and going forward when David Cameron talks about uh, the way that he wants the debate to go in the future uh, with with new restrictions to be brought in uh, because he says that currently countries with a lower GDP uh, when they accede to the EU it's inevitable that people will want to come to this country and he wants that looked at do you think that that's a fair point to be making I think uh, if I read his article correctly he refers to future enlargements of the European Union. That is, after the next round begins being discussed and a new member after the accession of Croatia gets into the European <coughs> Union. That is a point of discussion in accordance with the uh, applicable procedures among the member states and indeed uh, with the involvement of the European Commission and the European Parliament. Bulgarian Ambassador to the UK, Konstantin Dimitrov, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Well, let's uh, get more on this by talking to our uh, chief political correspondent, Norman Smith, who's at Westminster for us. Uh, Norman, we've had EU commissioners kind of queuing up to uh, 
pour scorn on what Mr Cameron's been saying about this. I suppose in some ways he won't mind that, will he? No, I'm, I'm sure probably a sort of big grin spread on Mr Cameron's face when he heard the Employment Commissioner today suggesting Britain was the nasty party. Why? Because if there's anything uh, more popular perhaps than cracking down on uh, migrants or being tough on benefit claimants, it's having a little light dust up with the European Commission. So I don't suppose uh, Mr Cameron has been at all bothered. And interestingly, we've just been uh, hearing from the Home Secretary, Theresa May, in the Commons, and she insists the government is going to press ahead and press ahead quickly with these changes. They are planning to introduce them as soon as possible in the new year. And she was suggesting it is the European Commission which is out of step with EU countries like Britain, suggesting that there are a coalition of other countries in the European Union who are equally other that accession countries can get easy access to welfare systems. In other words, they believe it is the Commission that is out of step. And Mrs May told MPs that the reason the government was pressing ahead with these changes was because they had learned the lessons from the mistakes of the last government, she said, when there had been free accession to all the new EU countries. Unlike the last government, which chose not to apply the transitional controls for countries like Poland and Hungary in 2004, this government is doing everything it can to make sure we are prepared for this latest extension in EU free movement rights. First, we are making full use of the full seven years available to us to impose transitional controls. That was something the party opposite failed to do in 2004, which meant that Britain was the only major economy in Europe to grant full labour market to millions of Poles, Hungarians and others. Now, interestingly, uh, major labour figures like Jack Straw have already acknowledged they got it wrong in terms of the EU uh, accession countries. Today, however, they focus their criticism on the fact that there is only a month to go uh, until borders are open to Romania and Bulgaria. And they question why the government was suddenly bringing forward this announcement at the last moment, suggesting it was basically a political ploy. And the Shadow Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper, questioned why there was nothing in the government's proposals to help those EU workers who risk being exploited by employers. There is a serious problem of low-skilled migrant workers being exploited, undercutting local workers and responsible businesses too. That is bad for everyone, yet she is doing nothing about it. We have urged her to take action against recruitment agencies who only target foreign workers, against factories that segregate shifts by nationalities against the loophole in the minimum wage that means migrant workers are put into overcrowded, tied accommodation to get around the rules, and against employers, for example, in the care sector who have recruited heavily from abroad but fail to train or to pay the minimum wage. Each time, she has refused. So what is she or the Prime Minister doing to address those problems for wages and jobs? Nothing. And the paradox about all the argy-bargy today is there probably is a very large degree of cross-party unity. Why? Because actually these are relatively limited benefit changes. Many of the proposals are not new. Others are already in practice in force. And you have actually more severe benefit curbs already in existence in some other EU countries. But as I suggested at the beginning, I think ministers are absolutely relaxed about the fact that there's a bit of a stushy that the European Commission are unhappy because it enables them to flag up, if you like, to voters that they are listening to their concerns about immigration and about Bulgaria and Romania. All right, Norman, many thanks indeed. Norman Smith there, our chief political correspondent. Uh, just to say, from Monday, we're going to be taking a closer look at migration with a series of reports from across Europe ahead of January the 1st. That's when Romania and Bulgaria gain full accession to the European Union. We'll be talking to people here and abroad on the impact that immigration has had on them. Coming up here on BBC News in the next few minutes. We will get the latest from the Prime Minister, David Cameron, who's calling for curbs on migration within the EU. Reaction from a debt advice charity to that news that millions of people are struggling with their personal debt. Stay with us for that. Jane and Matthew will be here at two with all of that for you then. 
Uh, before that, we're going to check out the latest weather prospects. Jay Wynn's got all the details for us over there on the balcony behind us. Hi, Jay.